Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, June 25th, 2012. Our top story is an update from the world of medicine. A scientist in Japan has successfully grown an optic cup from human stem cells. Success in manipulating stem cells isn't new, but what is new is growing three-dimensional tissue structures. Most stem cells in labs now are being grown into flat sheets, but previous work by these scientists has been able to grow 3D tissue from mouse embryonic stem cells. Obviously, this latest work is exciting because it's with human cells, but also because it didn't require guidance from the outside. This settles the long-time debate about whether such structures form based on the outside environment or from inside instructions. Retinal precursor cells spontaneously grew and formed into this optic cup containing a variety of cell types, including photoreceptors. The hope is that one day, tissue like this could be grown in large quantities for use in transplants, improving the vision of people with eye conditions. Next, from the world of genetics, new research from the University of Texas has demonstrated a surprising connection between DNA repair and cell aging, with some important implications. As you're probably aware, throughout the life cycle of a cell, its DNA can naturally accumulate damage, but with some ability to repair itself. You may also know that current knowledge suggests that the accumulation of this damage is a major factor in cellular aging and death. But as is usually the case, things aren't that simple. Certainly, damage to the genome is harmful, but repairing it might actually be worse. All this rethinking is because of a recent experiment. Cells were engineered to lack a major gene repair enzyme and actually lived longer. So a new hypothesis was formed that explains this new information, mainly that a byproduct of DNA repair is a major factor in cell lifespan. Because of the experiment that necessitated this hypothesis, the researchers knew exactly where to look. You see, a lot of genetic damage is from reactive oxygen compounds coming in contact with the base guanine, altering it to 8-oxoguanine. This modification can cause mutations, so a specific enzyme cuts it out and replaces it with normal guanine. However, it was found that this modified form of guanine doesn't just go away, but actually binds to the repair enzyme in a different location. It's this enzyme complex that can activate a powerful signaling pathway within the cell. These findings are new, but suggest that this DNA repair mechanism may act as a master regulator for things like metabolism, inflammation, growth, cell suicide, and other major processes. Further research may reveal potential medical applications involved with aging, cancer, and other diseases through the manipulation of this mechanism. Finally, we turn to the world of biotechnology. A team at Brookhaven National Laboratory have made some important discoveries related to biofuel production specifically producing them from algae. As we've mentioned before on Brainstorm, algae are ideal biological factories. Now, algae already produce a small amount of oil naturally, turning the carbon from CO2 and other sources into fatty acids. The problem is that way more of that carbon gets converted into starch and other sugar molecules. So, the question was, how could algae be made to preferentially produce oils instead of starch? That question couldn't accurately be answered because the metabolic pathways for algae oil synthesis weren't well understood, making this research very important. Before this research, the only known way to produce more oil was limiting the intake of certain nutrients like nitrogen. This prevented the algae from producing a lot of starch, allowing more carbon to be turned into oil. While each algae was producing more oil, limiting starch production essentially slowed or stopped the algae growth and multiplication. Not exactly ideal for fuel mass production, but with some good old-fashioned science, the Brookhaven team found a way to increase oil production and algae growth. To accomplish this, they cultured algae under a variety of nutrient conditions, including a strain engineered to not produce starch at all. But the winner for best overall oil production was normal algae on a very high carbon diet. Extra carbon essentially causes the algae to quickly max out starch production, then any other carbon absorbed goes straight to oil synthesis. This mechanism is surprisingly different to that of multicellular plants, but is actually more like mammalian fat production. With this new knowledge, hopefully researchers will continue to optimize the biofuel potential of algae. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.